morning. Good morning, Kaya. Good morning, sir. Yeah, so this morning I want to discuss the, I think last week we were discussing the, the input devices and the output devices yeah. last week. So maybe you can yeah. have a recap of that because this morning I want to discuss the output, I want to discuss the processing devices in the storage devices. Let me get this morning. Can you hear me very well? Can you hear me very well? Yes. There's a problem with your mic. Maybe just check your mic. So I'm saying this. So I'm saying last week we were discussing the, the various input devices and the various output devices. And we were able to highlight some of the some of the input devices. And we said these are the devices that are used to what to key in information in the computer in the computer. And which devices did we mention last week here? Just give me the input devices we mentioned last week. Just give me the we mentioned last week. A keyboard. There's a keyboard, what else? There's a mouse. There's a the mouse. There's a joystick. And the joystick, yeah, that is correct. And we still were able to highlight some of the output devices. Which devices did we discuss last week as output? The devices that I used to, to output information, or to display information, which are these devices? Output. Yeah, output devices yeah. we discussed. A speaker. We have the speakers. The visual display unit, the video. Yeah, the video, the monitor, that is correct. What else? And yeah. the printers, that is, and the print, the printers. The printers, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. yeah, that is correct. So this morning, I want to discuss the processing devices. That you get the what? The processing devices. And you know, for example, we said in the processing devices, that's a desire by now. Once we key in this data, it is supposed to be processed. So that now we can have what? The output. So you have what? Data is processed, you have what information information. And the main device now I want to and the main device now I want to discuss here is the CPU. I guess what the CP, the CPU. CPU. The processing, yeah, so we are discussing the processing device device. Then you have said these are the devices that are used to transform input into output. And we say it the CPU is considered as the brain of the compute or the computer. The reason we are saying it is the brain of the computer, the CPU is able to perform. All types of what data process processing together. It can perform yes. operation. Understood. I still yes. say that uh, this is it all for example, for example, maybe it will be stored in memory. It has also the main memory. So the P if you say it, and it has a concern as you and you say now the CPU has the main components. The result is called the memory unit. What together is the avoid the memory unit, the control unit, and we have what you call the ultimate logic U unit. They have the control unit, the memory unit, and we have what you call the arithmetic logic U unit. Before we discuss now the functions of these uh, units now. Maybe we can discuss now some of the characteristics of the CPU. Put together some of the features of, of the CP, the CPU. We have said the first one, it is used to control all operations of the computer, the computer, that is one feature. Still, the CPU is considered as the brain of the computer, the computer. The same same way the human brain works. In the same same way the computer CPU works. Still, another characteristic or another feature of the CPU is that uh, the CPU is able to perform all types of what data processing of operations. And lastly, we can say that the CPU is able to store data, immediate results, and still it is able to fetch what instru instructions are together. Remember, you said instructions they are considered as what well as the pro the programs are together that govern the operations of, of, that, of that compute that computer. So this form some of the attributes or some of the features depicted by the what by the cp by the cpu i hope you have understood that okay i hope you have understood that yeah maybe now we can discuss now maybe i can show you uh, a diagram of a cpu let me just show you a cpu or what you call the microchip let me just show you yeah, let me just show you what is a cpu or what is that microchip yeah because now the cpu is actually a small device it is a, it's a small device in the what in the computer motherboard let me just show you a diagram of a CPU. Let me just show you what a diagram of a hot of a microprocessor. It's a small diagram. Let me just show you. 
Uh, let, me, let, me, let me share the screen. Let me share the screen. Yeah, just show you what is the CPU, what we are discussing now. I hope. Let me just the screen. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. I want to display now. You are currently the only person in this conference. Yeah, so the first component of the CPU, the first component of the CPU, that is what you call, we have what you call the memory, the memory unit. Yeah, we have the memory, memory unit. And now for the memory unit, sometimes it is called what? The storage unit. Sometimes it's called the storage unit. That is the memory, the memory unit. And now this unit is able to instructions. Data and intermediate resource. The unit is able to store instructions, data and intermediate resource results. The memory unit is able to supply information to other units of the computer when needed. Sometimes you can refer to the storage unit as the internal storage or the main memory. Or even sometimes primary store storage even if you call it now what, what are the functions now of this memory unit now one of the functions the memory unit is to store all the data and instructions required for process processing to instructions for processing still it is able to store the intermediate results for processing yeah so the first one is able to store all the data and the instructions required for, for process processing remember you start to key in this data using all the input captures you can have the people you can have the mouse you can have the digital camera then that information is what it is processed once it's processed now we have information information together so you have state it is stores what intermediate results of process processing what has been processed can be stored in the computer the computer it can be stored in the, in the main memory or in external store storage still another load it, it is able to store final results of processing is able to store the final results of processing before these results are released to the output output the VAR device. The same, same way we have said information will be stored in the output, either in the main memory or in the external store storage. And lastly, the last function, the last function is that all inputs and outputs are transmitted through the main me the main memory. They have to go through what the main me memory. So these are the functions of the main memory.
memory, the functions of the okay. memory. Maybe we can this. Maybe I can show you a diagram. Let me just show you a diagram of the main memory. Yeah, let me just show you a diagram of the main memory. Yeah. Okay, I'm saying because it is taking yeah. it is taking some time to load, and we shall come with the base particular picture. We shall, we shall call them. I will show the I will show the diagram once we are doing the work. They see really good because it will cover the together. So now, yes. after the memory, this component the DPU is what we call the control U unit. It is what we call the control unit. Sometimes the part was what they say you. And now the control unit is main objective. Its main work now it is to control the operations of all the parts of the computer. I think that it is able to control yes. all the operations of all parts of the computer. Computer, but it, but now that control unit does not perform any processing operation. Operation. I think that it is just coordinate. Yes. Where the information will be will be stored together. So yes. What are the main functions now of the control unit? One of the main functions is that it manages and coordinates all the, the units of the compute, the computer. It manages and coordinates all the units of the compute, computer. And remember, which are these units? You can have what? You can have, uh, for example, you can have the memory. Is it true? That is one unit of the computer. Still, you can have uh, the secondary storage together. You can have what? Yes. You can have maybe the display ship, is another what another you another unit. You can have what the power supply you unit. These are what other units of the computer. Still, you have said another you have said it manages and coordinates all the units of the computer. Computer. Don't worry about the notes now. I have prepared the soft copy notes very organized. They are posted together. Yes. Uh, you like you'll access them together. You'll be able to access them together. Don't worry about the notes. They are, I have uploaded the notes together. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. I've approved it. Even the previous notes for us, they are together. Don't worry about the notes, okay? Yeah, so another rule now we have said it is responsible for controlling the transfer of data and instructions, responsible for controlling the transfer of data and instructions among other units of a computer. A computer. So it can control where this information will be, will be stored, or the information that is supposed to be displayed. That, that, that is supposed to be displayed on the screen this is the work of the control unit to determine which information will be displayed on the visual display you unit still the control unit communicates with the input and output whatever devices yeah remember for the information to be transferred from the computer to that unit to that output device to that printer it is of the control unit to coordinate that communicate communication still another function of the control unit it obtain it obtains the instructions from the memory. It is able to obtain all the instructions. These are the rules that govern the operation. The operations. Once once you obtain the instructions, it is able to interpret them. Understood? It obtains all the instructions from the memory, interpret them, and then direct the operations of the compute of the computer and direct what the operations of the compute of the computer. So these are the main functions of the whole of the control you unit. Very careful that you have said it does not process or store the day the data. It does not process or store the day the data. So understood the care. So we have understood now the main functions of the whole of the control unit. Yes. Yeah, that is good. So the last now the last component of the CPU is what we call we have what we call the arithmetic logic U unit. Arithmetic logic U unit. So let me ask you. Yeah, that is what you call the arithmetic logic unit. So, what you understand? Arithmetic. Okay. Yeah. Arithmetic is like uh, something to do with mathematics. Uh, mathematical functions that together. So now for this I'll get myself and how to use Let me just say it. Let me just say it for you. Yeah, we have said as well. It has two units. 
Now, I hope you can see that. I hope you can see that information. Yeah, you can see that now. We have what the arithmetic section, you have what you call the arithmetic section. Maybe you can discuss now the first section, the arithmetic code set section now together. For this one now, it is able to, to perform the arithmetic operations. And which are these operations? Addition, you can have what? Subtraction, you can have what? Multiplication, multiplication together. It, these functions or these operations are performed by the what? Arithmetic word set section. You have said, have addition, have division, multiplication, and what? And subtract, subtraction. Then there is what you call the logic section. There is what you call the logic code, the logic set section. For this one now, it is able to perform the logic operations. And which are these operations in a computer? For example, in case you open the Excel or the spreadsheet software, there is what you call, we have, you can merge the data. For example, you can what? You can merge what the data. You can compare the data. You can even sort the data. For example, you can decide now to sort the data either by ascending order or by descending or order. Still, you can select and match what the day, the data. So this, all these operations, they are called what? They are logic by themselves. They are, they are logic. We have comparison. We can have merging of data. We can have sorting. And what? And match and matching. That is what you call the logic operation. We have said they are performed by the logic part of the whole of the system you unit. Yeah. And so we are doing the what with the three components of the system you unit. These are the, these are the three components of the system you unit. Yeah. Any question? So in case now in an exam scenario, you, you are requested to just yeah, let me just share this diagram. In case you're requested, it is supposed to have this. Look at that. In case you're requested. It has the CPU, it has that. Just look at this diagram very well. Yes. 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 You are currently the only person in this conference. In this conference. Okay, I'm sure I'm just taking some time. I'm just like that. Down. Just let me just delete the page. I'm sharing. I'm sharing the data. You are currently the only person in this conference. Okay, yeah, just with the diagram, just with the show, show that diagram is very, very, very essential. Very essential. Yeah, okay, can you see that diagram here now? It has rooted now. Can you see it? Yes, yes, yeah. I can see it. Now, yeah, in case now you're requested to assist now the system unit, no, not the system unit. The CPU, you're together, you're supposed to come up with that diagram. You're together, and you have to be very, very careful. Look at the arrows here. Now, in this diagram here, we can have this border. Can you see this border here? Are you able to see this border here? Yes, yes. So yes. What is happening now? We're having a boundary. Why? The, the, the CPU is in the motherboard. It's what? 
he said the computer the computer they get up. yeah and yes. if you look at the input devices now look at the arrow now the arrow is pointing towards what the system is there processing unit again why the input yes. now unit it is going to be in information to the what into the cp cpu then information here is processed that is what is processed whether it is the medical whether it is not the operations now and now we're having an arrow here from the this border here towards the what the output unit why look at the direction of the arrow now it is used to now to output what the information from the what from the cp the particular in case now you are, you are requested we just said now the cpu is supposed to come up with that diagram but together just look at it look at it now it's supposed to, it's supposed to come up with that diagram any question on that no yeah it is okay no that was what so, uh, uh, if, if I can ask, is, is the diagram in the notes it is the notes. Everything it is the notes now. Everything it is the notes. You will see them. Right okay. Together. Okay. Yes. Yeah, everything is the notes. Right together. You will access them. Right together. I have uploaded them already. Right together. Yes. And yeah, now, after the process, after the processing devices, now we can discuss now the memory devices. Right together. We can discuss what the memory device devices. Right together. We can discuss now there is the RAM, there is the ROM. We have the cache memory. We have what external stock storage. So let me ask you here now. We have discussed memory somewhere. Who is memory now? I want to discuss memory in details now. What is memory? What is what is a memory now? Mm, a memory is a it is a storage device. A storage device. Yeah, you can say now. Yeah, yeah, can, that is correct. You can say a memory. It is just like a what, like as a human brain. Not together. It is to store data and what instruction. Instruction. Not together. But now, in respect now to computers now, a computer memory. It is the storage space in the computer where your data is to be processed and instructions required for processing are stored. Store. That is in respect to what to compute computers. That storage space in the computer where your data is to, is to be processed and instructions required for processing are what are stored. Are stored. Now, in the in terms of memory, now you can discuss the, the result you call. You have, you have the cache memory. You have what the cache memory. You just Type that word. We have the cache memory. Is there the main memory? And we have what we call the secondary me memory. We have yeah. this. I have considered that. I have posted. That is that information. Yeah. The cache memory. Can you see? I have posted somewhere in the chat uh, group. But... Yeah, we have the cache memory, the main memory, or and what the secondary store storage. Now we can discuss now the what the cache me memory. So the cache memory now, this is a very high speed memory which is used to do what to speed up what the cp the cpu is a very high speed the correct memory which is used to speed up the cpu now the cache memory it acts as a buffer but together between the cpu and what the main memory so what happens now with this memory it is sits in between so you have cpu on one side and you have what the main memory on one side so the cache memory sits in between but together you have understood it acts as a buffer between the CPU, you know, the main memory. It is in between. You have CPU on one end, and you have what? I mean, the main memory on one end. It's in between, between or it's in the center. Now, the cache memory is used to hold those parts of data and programs. It's used to hold those parts of data programs that are frequently accessed by what? By the CPU, by the CPU. So, for example, look at the CPU regularly, maybe day in, day out accessing certain information every day every day that information is not kept in what in the main me memory that information is kept what in the cache me memory and now when the cpu is accessing information from the cache memory it takes less time as compared now to when the, the same same cpu is accessing information from the main me memory yeah everybody understood that here yeah. concerning the cache memory Okay, have you understood now the cache memory? Yes. Yeah. Any question on that? Any question on that? No question. Yeah. So what are the benefits now of having a cache memory? One of the benefits of having a cache memory, it is faster than what the main memory. Why? The information is retrieved at a faster rate. Or it takes less time for the CPU to do what? To retrieve the information, the information. Then still. It is able to store data temporarily because of the cache map memory. Still, it is able to store the programs that can be executed within a short period of time. 
those programs that will, will take like maybe 10 seconds to be executed, they can be stored in the cache memory. But for example, maybe having a program that will take 10 minutes to be executed, that program can be stored in the main memory. Still, the cache memory it consumes less access time. It consumes what less access time compared to the what the main memory. For example, the CPU can access information from the cache memory maybe 10 milliseconds. Look at that. But now the main memory can even take what even that what milliseconds. That is the microsecond. That is the microsecond. So it consumes what less access time as compared to what the main memory. But now even even now this memory is having some benefit. Good benefit. The CMC memory can have some limitations. I get that. One of the limitations now, or one of the disadvantages now of having the cache memory, it is very expensive. Very expensive. It's costly. Then still, the same same cache memory, it has limited capacity. It has what? Limited capacity. It cannot store of information. So it, so it will just store just less information. The space in the cache memory is very, very minimal. These are the disadvantages of having what the cache mem the cache memory. Then of the cache memory, there is what you call the second is what you call the main mem memory. They have what you call the main mem memory. Sometimes we call it what the primary mem memory. And you know here we have two the RAM and the, the RAM and the ROM. So the main memory it is used to hold those parts of data instructions in which the computer is currently working on. It is able to hold those instructions or the data or that work that the computer is currently working on. For example, maybe you have opened Microsoft Word. Maybe you are formatting a certain document, you have that document. That information is kept in the what in the main me memory. I get that. But now still the same same main memory it has some limitations. It has a limited capacity. I get that. And sometimes the information can be lost in case the file goes off. I that. Why? This main memory it is made up of something we call a semiconductor device. I understood. Care. I understood. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We have said that uh, these memories now they are developed or they are made of something we call a semiconductor device, and that is why these memories they are not fast as compared to what we call the registers. Together. So what are the characteristics now of these memories? Because we said they are categorized into two. We have the RAM and we have what the ROM, the ROM. So what are the features of these memories now? One of the features of the main memory is that it is a semiconductor memory. It is a semiconductor memory. That is one. Still, it is a volatile memory. It is what a volatile memory. The reason we are saying it's volatile, it can lose information in case the power goes off. For example, you are working on, on a document in Excel. You had not saved that document. And you have some power inside. Immediately the power goes off. That information is lost. That information cannot be retrieved. retrieved. But together, still, another characteristic of this main memory, it is the working memory of the computer. It is the working memory of the computer. Why? It is stored the information on which the user is currently working on. Together, understood. Okay, understood? Yes, yes. Yeah, then still, yeah, then still, another catalyst is that uh, a computer cannot run without the primary memory. A computer cannot run or cannot work without the main memory. Let me ask you, here: yeah, can a computer work without, without having the RAM? Can it work? No, yeah. no, it can't work. Cannot work. Yeah. So let me just show you. Let me just show you now the main memory. Now let me just show you the screen of, of the whole of the main me memory. Memory. Let me just show you. They are here. The main memory. You could see the demo. Let me just show you the ROM. In case now, in case here, your computer yes. does not have a RAM, it produces what a beeping sound. It produces a beeping sound, sound together. Yes. In case you just remove the RAM, yes. and you try switching on the computer, it produces what a beeping sound. So let me just Down. show you. 
that is sharing the screen just do it Yeah, okay. I hope can, can you see that diagram here now? Can you see now the main memory now or the RAM? This is the RAM now. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Yeah, for example, in, in this memory now, we can have a, we can have a 4 GB RAM, we can have a 2 GB RAM, what together? They are here. Yeah. You can see them clearly now. Let us have this one. Yeah, this is the RAM. What together? This is the whole, this is the RAM. RAM. What together? Um, for example, yeah. in case the computer is having an 8 GB RAM, because your computer is having an 80 GB RAM, that computer is a bit faster. It's a bit more fast than a computer which is having a 1 GB RAM together. Yeah, this is what yes. we call the RAM now, the main memory. Yeah. Then you have seen in the case now, your computer does not have, there is no way it can, it can work. Together. It will just produce what? A beeping sound? Beeping sound. Oh. Yeah. 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 I, hope you have, I hope you have ever seen this one. I hope you have ever seen this one. Yes. Yeah, that is good. Now, now for this RAM now, they are categorized into two. They are categorized into what? Into, into two together. Yeah. There is what you call yeah. the RAM and the ROM together. You have RAM and ROM, RAM and ROM together. Yeah, maybe yeah. can start the first one, the RAM. Can start the first one, the RAM. Just keep it for you. The random access, access memory. memory. So, what is this memory according to you? What is this memory? The random access memory. Uh, it stores information permanently. Yeah, we can. No, 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 no. For this one, it stores information temporarily. Oh, temporarily. Yeah, yeah, temporary. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it stores information temporarily. Temporary. So the RAM, it is the internal memory of the CPU. It is the internal memory yeah. of the CPU. So in the data program, in program resolve, it's all together. Now, yes. the RAM is volatile. This is what is volatile. The reason we are saying this is volatile. It is able to lose information in case the power goes off. Yes. It loses information in case the power goes off. Because we say, for example, in case you are having a, you are formatting a document in Microsoft Word. And you have lost that document. What will happen? Once the power goes off, you lose, you lose the information. Why? That information was kept in the RAM. There's no this is for a time, right? Yes. Still, it is due to store information. That is frequently accessed by the what by the computer computer together. Computer. Yeah. Yes. That is where it is called what? The random access to me memory together. Memory. Yes. Yeah. Then for the RAM now, they are categorized into two. There is what you call dynamic RAM and static what? Static RAM. RAM. Let me ask you. Your computer is static or dynamic? Hmm? Let me ask you. Yeah, it, does it is it static or dynamic? Mm, sure. yeah. Because we have VRAM, we have SRAM. Yeah, most of the computers now they use the dynamic RAM, right? Because they use the dynamic RAM. For example, maybe in our computers now we have to refresh every time. Is it true? For example, maybe your, maybe your computer is freezing, you still you can refresh every time together. You refresh continuously. Yes. That is yeah, that is what a dynamic RAM. But for start, if you don't have to refresh, refresh together. Refresh. Two, yes. We have said. That the RAM is categorized into the two. The static RAM, the S RAM, and we have what we call the, the, the data. Maybe you can start the first one, the static RAM. The word static indicates that the memory retains its content. But together, the word static means that the memory retains its content as long as the power is being suppressed. But together, yes. understood. It, that it indicates yes. that the memory retains its content as long as the power is being suppressed. Right? In the case now, you disconnect the power. In the case you do what? You disconnect the power, the data is lost due to its volatile nature. That is what we call the static RAM. And one of the characteristics of having a static RAM is that of the static RAM, you do not have to refresh the computer. Together. Yes. Static RAM is that of the static RAM, you do not have to refresh the computer. Together. You don't have to do what? Yeah. Press the, the computer. The computer. Still, it is faster than dynamic RAM. Understood? Yes. It is faster than what? Dynamic RAM. 
term. It has long life. But yeah, that it has yeah. got a long life span. But yeah, it can see the computer for many years as compared to a dynamic lamp. lamp. For example, in the case we have these people who like playing FIFA a lot. I think that. I think that. So for example, in the case we play FIFA a lot, and now sometimes the RAM blows up. Have you ever realized that the RAM blows up because of the graphics? I that. Because of yes. the whole of yes. the graphics. I think that. Why? It do not, it, yes. Most of the dynamic RAM, they do not have what you call the dedicated graphics. I that. But the static RAMs, they have that. So the S lamp has what? It has long life. As compared to what? Dynamic lamp. Still, and the attribute is that it consumes more power. It consumes what? More power. power. That is the limitation now of the old DS RAM. It has to use a lot of power. Still, it is expensive. Can you get that? Yeah, the cost of uh, procuring a static RAM is a bit higher than what? The dynamic RAM. And actually, the S RAM is large in size and it can be used as a whole as a cache memory. It's large in size and can be used as a whole as a cache memory. It's large in size and can be used as a whole as a cache memory. Remember what we said about the cache memory. Is that what high speed me memory that acts as a buffer between what the CPU and what and the main me memory? And we said it is used to store information that is frequently accessed by the computer by the computer. So that is what we call the static RAM. Then you have dynamic RAM, the DRAM now. Together. For this one now, you must continuously refresh in order to maintain the data. In case in case you are in case you are multitasking. In a computer, and that computer is using the dynamic lamp. You have to refresh every time. Why? Sometimes it can freeze. You cannot access the information, so you have to refresh it together. So, what are the characteristics now of this dynamic lamp? So, the characteristics of dynamic lamp they are the opposite of what of the static lamp. For example, we said for the static lamp, we said it has what long life. What about dynamic now? Here, yeah. mm. the static is has long life. What about the dynamic now? Short life. <laughs> Correct. It has what? Short life. Short life. Yeah. For example, yes. maybe you can use it in a computer for four years, let it bruise or the bruise up together. Then we say yes. for the static now, you have to you have to refresh continuously. What about the dynamic? Yeah, for the static, you... for the static we say you don't have to refresh it together. What about the static? What yeah. about the dynamic? Uh, the static you refresh it. Yeah, for the static, we said you don't have to refresh it. Is it true? Yes. Yeah, you don't have to refresh it. What about the dynamic? You have to refresh it. Correct. Then we said for the static RAM, we said it is what? Less expensive. Dynamic? Uh, expensive. Correct. We said for the static RAM, it is what? Large in size. What about now the dynamic? Small in size. Correct. Then we say now for the static, we said it is what? costly or is expensive what about now dynamic it is cheap it is cheaper yeah it is correct less expensive last we said for the static we said it is faster what about now the dynamic it's slow yeah it is what it is very very slow together slow. yeah yes. yeah that is correct so these are the major differences that together of what dynamic lamp and what the static lamp in case now you are requested to explain the difference between dynamic RAM and static RAM, you can obtain the differences from what the character they characteristics together. We have around yes. seven or around six what characteristics of what this RAM together. So you obtain the differences now from these what these three features. That is what you call the RAM, the RAM together. Because we see it, the main memory is categorized into two. We have RAM and ROM. ROM. That's two. Yeah. Yes. And we are through the, and we are through with the RAM now. Now what we discuss now. The ROM. The what? The ROM. The read only memory. Memory. So have, you, have you come across this term somewhere now? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Now, which is this memory according to you? Which is this memory? Uh, information is stored uh, permanently. Yeah? Yeah, yeah information correct. Is yeah, that is correct. The information is stored yeah. permanent. And, and you said that we said last time that it is stores information that is responsible for the booting process. For the, for the booting pro process. Yes. Yeah. This memory you can only read, but you cannot modify the content of this memory. You can only read, but 
you cannot modify the information on this memory. Yes. The information here is permanently stored. That is why we are saying result than volatile. I think that you cannot lose the information. I think that, for example, when the computer is booting, when the computer is booting, when the computer is powering on, the information is retrieved. That information is for the booting is retrieved from the what? From the BIOS. I think from the BIOS, from the BIOS what? The BIOS chip. And the BIOS chip is inside the what? The raw, the raw understood. Yes. Yeah. And now we have types of ROM. We have what? Types of ROM. So the first one is what yeah, types of ROM. We just type it for you. We just type it for you here. Types of ROM. Yeah, we have uh, the types of ROM. And the first one is what you call the programmable read on memory. The first one is what you call the programmable read on memory. Let me just type it for you. Yeah, if you can see that, I you see it. I posted. Uh, you can see it somewhere. Now for this one, it's called the prom, the P ROM. The programmable read only me memory. I think that. For this one, yeah. this is the read only memory. I can be modified only once by the user. You can only you can only modify this information only once. I think that. And what happens yes. now, we are the users. Yeah, we are the users, we are the users. So what we do now, we can buy a blank from what you get that? And we ban some information or get the contents in that what, in that disk. I think that. So once yes. we modify that information once, there is no way we can delete that information. What you get that? So in case you buy a blank programmable on memory and you enter some information, there is no way you can delete that information, that information together. So it is only it is only modified just one. Understood? Yes. You cannot erase. Then there is what you call the erasable, programmable read-only memory. Erasable. Mm -hmm. We have the term erase. What is the term erase now? Erasable, programmable read-only memory. Huh? What, what is the term now? But it is because you have seen now it has what you call the erasable, programmable read-only memory. Oh, okay. It, it means that the information in it can be removed. Yeah, that is correct. So what happens with this one now? In case to expose the information on this memory, can understand change. Like, I think that. Yes. Yeah. For this, for example, in case you want to erase, to erase the information, you just expose now this disk for this memory in sunlight. I think that it what in sun in sunlight. Remember, there is what you call the ultraviolet light. Once it is this in the sunlight, but not that minute. That information is what is the risk. That's true. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Then there is what you call, we have the third one, elect electrically erasable, programmable, read on me memory. That is what you call the er electrically erasable, programmable, read on me memory. So this one, you can only program it and erase it electri electronically together. For this one, uh, you can you can you can erase even ten times. I think that even what ten times that times. I that. But you have to use a computer, a computer. I think a that. computer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So these are the three types of what, and I've posted them. I'm posting them somewhere. Hope you can see them on the chat. Can you see them on that public chat? No. They are here. Can you see the public okay. chat? So I just yeah. go back. Yeah, but you but you will see them together. You will see them together. I've posted, I've posted them somewhere. And you have for this one. They can only be programmed in the race code. So, so we are together. Yeah. So now, what, what are the benefits of the ROM? What are the advantages now of having what? The read only memory. What are the benefits? One of the benefits of the ROM is that it is non volatile. It is what? Non volatile. Volatile. Yeah, that is one of the advantages. It is what? Non volatile. Why? It does not lose information if the power goes off. Another advantage now of it having can. the ROM. You said it can. We are saying it cannot lose information even if the power goes off. Okay. That is another time. Another advantage of this one, it is less expensive than RAM. I think that is what less exp expensive than what than the RAM. The ROM is more reliable than the RAM. It is more 
the layer above than what? The lamp? The lamp. The information stored in the lamp are static. No, no, not on the lamp, on the rope. The information stored on the rope, they are static. So they do not require that regular refreshing. They do not require that regular refreshing. And lastly, the last benefit of having the ROM, the content of that ROM cannot be shared accidentally. There is no way that you can say that by accident you're able to modify the information in the hot in the, the ROM. Together. Yeah. So these are some of the benefits now of the hot of the of the ROM. Yeah, any question on that? Any question? No, no, no. no. Yeah. No now the result is called the secondary storage now. We have what it called the secondary store storage. The memory is it, the memory is going to be you have a cache memory, you have the main memory, and you have what the secondary memory together. Sometimes the secondary memory is called what the secondary storage or external storage. It's called what the external store storage. So which is this secondary memory? For example, we have the DVDs together, we have the DVDs, we have the hard disk. Can have the properties information kept in these devices. These devices we call, we call what the secondary storage, whatever devices. And now the secondary storage it is slower than the main memory, slower than the main memory. Still, they are used for storing information permanently, not temporarily. You can store information in a disk permanently because remember, you have some disk whereby you cannot erase that information. That information. So, what are the attributes? What are the characteristics now of the secondary memory? One of the characteristics of the secondary memory is that it is that a, it is an unvolatile me memory. It is what an unvolatile memory. There is no way you can lose information even if the bar goes off. That information which has kept now in a disk or in a CD ROM. Still, a computer can run without what a secondary me memory. A computer can run without a hard disk, but a computer cannot run without what the primary me memory. A computer cannot learn without what the RAM. It will just produce a beeping sound, beeping sound. But in case your computer has no RAM, has no hard disk, it can still what can still run. But you can also inform it, information. Still, a computer, not a, not a computer, another catalyst of that secondary storage is that uh, data is permanently stored. Even if the power goes off, there is no way we can lose what this information, this information. Even if the power goes off, there is no way. We can lose all this information, this information. And lastly, they are also the part was what the backup memories. They are also the part was what the backup me memories. Why? A secondary storage has a large memory than what as the primary store storage. For example, in case you compare, in case you're having a magnetic disk, like a hard disk, you can be having a memory of 500 watt GB. You can be having what? A memory of what? 500 GB. But in case you compare with the RAM is having 8 GB. That disk is having what? More, me more memory. Yeah. These are what you call the secondary me memories. And you know and you and you know them. So okay, have you come across the hard disk somewhere? Have you ever seen a hard disk? It's an example of a secondary memory. Have you ever seen a hard disk? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we have the hard disk, we can have the Compact disk, you can have the DVD, you can have the floppy disk. But now the computers of today they do not support the floppy disk. I don't think they support today. The computers we're using today they do not have that sort of the floppy disk. Let me just show you a floppy disk. It was it was here sometime some years back. Let me just show you a floppy disk. Let me just show you. Yeah, let me just show you a floppy disk. Yeah, they are here. I think you have, you have never come across this one. Okay, I don't believe you have seen this one. Okay. Have you ever seen this one? Yes, I've ever seen it. This is a little computer. Ah, yeah. That's good. And that is it. Yeah, that is correct. For this one, they were used by the only computer computers. So yeah. Now, the system meet of nowadays, they do not have a solution for the floppy disk. And now, for this one, the memory was around 100 MB. So it was what? Around 100 MB, some 144 MB. And that is very, very minimum what memory. Very, very minimum memory. Yeah. These are what? The secondary devices. The secondary what? Storage devices. 
devices. And we are through now with the map, with the memories now. I want to discuss now the computer motherboard. Look at that. So that now we can discuss the video slot in the motherboard, you can have the video port, you can have the VGA port now. I want to discuss now the computer ma motherboard. Yeah, the computer motherboard. So now for the motherboard now, it is served. Sometimes it is called the PCB, the printed circuit board, the PCB, the printed circuit board. For this one, it is able to serve as a single platform to connect all the parts of the computer together. It is able to serve as a what? It is a single platform to connect all the parts of the computer. Actually now, this, that motherboard can connect the CPU. It can connect the hard drive. The same same motherboard, it can connect with the optical drives. It can connect the sound card, the video card. It can even connect ports. It can even con it, 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 it even contains what you call the expansion cards, for example, the video card and the game cards, which can be connected directly or via with the key, the keyboards. That is what you call a computer motherboard. So let me just illustrate now a diagram here of a computer motherboard. Let me just show you a computer motherboard. Let me just show you. I'll show you a computer motherboard. Uh, because I believe you are Thomas, so you believe by seeing. Let me just show you. Just show you the one which is clear. Have this one. I just just, just want to show this diagram. Yeah, you can see, for example, let me just show you. Yeah, you can see you have the RAM here. Can you see this RAM here? Can you see it? You can see here, but you can have what? This motherboard is able to support what? Two RAMs here together. Yeah, we can see now we're having the fan is here. You can see the fan. What else can we see? Yeah, we can see now we're having a, this is what we call the, we're having the HDMI port is here. We're having the VGA port is here. We are having the mouse port and the and the keyboard port are here. We are having the USB ports are here. You can see you are having the the microphone ports are here. You are, you are having this is what we call the internet port. This is the computer ma motherboard. Let me just show you another diagram. The motherboard. Just show you. Maybe we can have this one. Yeah, just observe this one. Yeah, look at this diagram here. Can you see that diagram here? So you're able to balance in the motherboard. Yes, I can. I can see it. Maybe we can discuss now the, the characteristics. We can discuss now the characteristics now or the features now of this motherboard. The features or the characteristics of, of the computer motherboard. One of the attributes is that eh, the motherboard is able to support various types of compo components. You can support what? Various types of compo components. Yeah, you absolutely can have the sound card, you can have the video card, you can have the display chip, you can have the optical drives, you can have the hard drives. Is able to support types of various types of compo components. Still, under attribute of the motherboard, the motherboard cases and for surprise, they must be compatible to work together. Not together, there is no way, for example, you can be using a different for surprise unit which is not compatible with the, with the motherboard. So, for example, in the case one of your one of the components in your, in your motherboard grows up, the technician must use a component which is compatible with the what with the motherboard. Together, for example, the case the first supply unit has been damaged, just be very, very careful when repairing to avoid now using a PSU which has higher voltage than what than the required voltage than what in the motherboard. Still, a motherboard is able to support a single type of CPU, a single type of CP, CPU, and a few types of what of memory. So together, for example, you can have um, the NVIDIA. The 
detail and how the AMD. There is computer thing, AMD and video the same, same thing. Yeah. These are some of the features of the, of the motherboard. So we can discuss now some of the ports which are used in the computer motherboard. We have what we call the ports. For example, we can have the VGA port, we can have the you can have the HDMI port, you can have the USB port. So what is the port? Okay, what is the port according to you? What is the port? Because I want to discuss the port. What is the port? Okay, what is the port according to you? A port. Uh, a port is uh, uh, like a place where you, you enter like the HDMI port, the USB yeah. port. It's where you enter the devices, like the flat, yeah. the USB. On the monitor, there's a place where you enter the the USB port. It's a hole. Am I right? Yeah, that is correct. That is correct. That is correct. So, a port, it can be a physical docking point. I think it can be a what? A physical docking point. In No, 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 but now, yes. You are currently the only person in this conference. I hope now I'm very clear. Yes. Your mic is having some echoes. So you are saying that uh, a port it can be that physical point in which an external device can be connected to the computer, the computer. And you have seen, for example, in case you're having that pen drive, in case you're having that external hard disk, and you want now to connect to that computer, you can only use what you call the USB port. I think that's what is what you call a port. A port. So you can say a port is that docking point through which information flows from a program to the computer or over the internet because you can have what the internet for what so what are the types of ports you have and let me just show you something here you can just show your diagram of some of the ports you have let me just show you that diagram here let me just show you the various ports in a computer Yeah, just a minute, can I share the diagram? It's loading.
You are currently the only person in this conference. Let me just take some time. Let me just close the program and start it. Some time. So I'm saying, I'm saying, let's see if this is away from the diagram. You will observe the diagram in the notes together. Yeah, you use the diagram in the notes together. Because now, let us discuss now the port now. I'm saying this take some time through the diagram, but it takes some time. Maybe now we can discuss another types of the ports. For example, you can have what you call the parallel port. You can have what you call the parallel port. And for this one, it is used to connect the scanners and all the pre the printers. I've seen you'll see them in the notes. We can have what you call the PS2 port. For example, we had the, the old computers. Look at that. They used they used to connect the keyboard and mouse with them, the PS2 port, the PS2 port ports. They are circling what they are both circling shape together, but not a full circle. Then there is what you call the USB port. You have what you call the USB port. So together, for example, nowadays. The USB port, they can connect all kinds of what external devices. For example, you can connect a hard disk, a printer, a scanner, a mouse, even a keyboard. Where is the what you call the USB port? The USB means the universal serial port. That is the USB, the universal serial port. Still, we can have the VGA port. And together, for example, the VGA port is able to connect the system unit and the monitor. And together. So there's no, for example, there's no information on the monitor can be displayed unless you have the VGA port. Then you can have even the firewire port. You can have the firewire port. And for these ones, they used to connect the video equipment, the computer, the computer. And for this person now, they're able to transfer large amounts of data at a very high speed. The firewire port. Then you have the power connector that I used to connect the power supply unit in the world. The external port, power, um, so you can have the internet port, for example, in case you want to connect the computer with the, with, the, with the internet or the network. You have what you call the Ethernet port, port together. It is able to connect to a network, the high speed, high speed. Then you have the, the modem port. For example, maybe you don't want to use the internet port now, and you want now your computer to use the modem. You have that port, you have that port, port. And then you have what you call the, there is what you call the DVI port. The DVA port, the digital video interface port. For this one, it is used to connect the D to the computer's high video graphic card. It is used to connect the computer's LCD. LCD means the liquid crystal display monitor to the computer's high speed video gra graphics. So these are some of the ports in the computer. The computer. Yeah, there are some of the ports in the computer. Any question? Any question, Kaya? Yeah, because I think that is enough. That is enough for today. That is enough for today. Yeah. So we are able to discuss now the processing devices and what we call the memory device. So together. So how was the class today? How was it today? Yes. The class was fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we, uh, we had some challenges with the network. Yeah, with the network, yeah. There's a network point. No. There is a. I have posted a question. You're supposed to work on it together. There's a question you're supposed to work on now together. So just open uh, this. Uh, there's a question together. I want to work on it together. Discussion. I want to work on it in case we have another question. You can ask.
have you seen the question? Just confirm the question. Just confirm the question. Just confirm the question. The question or, or the question that was posted. Yeah, have you seen it? No, not yet. I'll see it after the class. Yes? Uh, yeah, then you can, you can work on it. Yeah, you can work on it. Now. It's just supposed to work on it before to get the market. The market. So okay. have a good day. In case, in case I have another question, you can employ So have a good day. Okay, and about the notes, you have already posted them. Eh? Yeah, they are there. All the notes are there, even the last they are combined, they are there. Okay. Yeah, so you ensure you are on that question before talking about them. Yes, I'll be marking. Okay.